Hey, what's up? It's John from the YouTube channel ProCrafts. Back in 2021, we did a 24-hour telethon to raise funds for the National Council on Problem Gambling. In fact, we raised over $6,000 to raise awareness and provide resources for those with gambling problems. As part of the telethon, we interviewed over 20 of the biggest names in gambling to get their perspective on gambling issues, gambling problems, their experiences, and of course, have a little bit of fun with them. Here, I get to interview one of my heroes, Dave Carlin from Same Bet, the consummate professional, amazing interviewer, and a big contributor to Craps Nation and the Craps community as a whole. It was a blessing to be able to be on this side of the microphone with Dave. Dave, Dave how you doing, buddy? <laughs> hey, good morning, John. I, I oh. think I could say that. Aren't you, uh, didn't you just pass midnight your time? Uh, we were at 12.15, yep. I'm, I'm running yep. a little bit behind schedule. We're trying, it's hard with, you know, the beginning section ran long because we had a problem technically, as you know. Um, and I don't, still don't know why the uh, why the live streams aren't working. I got to figure this out. So, well, you know that it's not important right now. Yeah. Uh, it's just great to. It's a uh, bummer. Yeah, it, it's a bummer. But hey, we'll we'll uh, live and learn for next year's uh, event. Exactly. Yeah, it it, it should be. I said I'm, I'm I have tech support chat going with them, but they're you know, you get what you get, and I'm trying to still run live here so keep the show going yeah yeah i get totally, it totally yeah we're doing all right hey, we're doing all right so uh hey, yeah you're gonna run some best of right you got yeah, some plan for us some clips that i'm going to show but uh before we get to all of that i i, I want to give a shout out to a couple of your people um skill sure. and luck uh i think you were maybe the first or second commenter uh, when we went live uh earlier today and i'm looking back through the chat skill's been with you i mean he's like your wingman man he, he's right there beside you uh, all night all night long uh, Waylon, you know, he, he's also been out there quite a bit. So you've got a pretty good mm -hmm. following here for, uh, uh yeah. what, five or six hours in. It's amazing that they're sticking with, I can't believe it. I'm yeah, I'm seeing like Otto was texting us way in the beginning of the night. So it's, it's awesome. Yep. Yep. So, you know, um, thanks to everybody mm -hmm. who's out there watching and watching this telethon, uh, you know, it's a marathon of craps channels is basically what we're doing here, <laughs> bringing all of these uh, YouTube content creators in and having discussions about, you know, dark side betting strategies and uh, this, that and the other. And uh, it, it's just a great thing. You know, I, I, I'm very happy to be part of it. It's I, I'm glad to have you here. And I'll tell you, selfishly, this is like the coolest thing because, <laughs> yeah. you know, you get to meet everybody like, you know, like I told Jacob, like I, I knew him. I knew him from watching his channel. We don't really know the guy. You know, and I called him up and we'd had a little nice phone conversation and, you know, through the hour here, it's like you really get to know a person mm -hmm. and it's just so cool to bring everybody together. And like I said, I get to be the one that gets to talk to everybody. So I feel like I'm living the dream really for me. This is like a dream come true. Yeah. Well, you know, that's, uh, we talk about YouTube content creation and uh, the evolution of my, my channel. Uh, I started out doing some betting strategies and rolling mm -hmm. the dice and and eventually i kind of took a step back and said well you know who am i <laughs> who am i to be showing some of these strategies and i kind of twisted it around i started bringing in guests and doing interviews and uh, and i can kind of hide behind the interviewers <laughs> and, <laughs> and i don't have to put my own thoughts out there so this is going to be a little bit different for me if, uh, if uh if you start asking me questions the tables are <laughs> turned on me I mean, the interview, interviewing is hard. I mean, I, 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 and I told people this too, like after I was on your show a couple weeks ago, you know, like my respect meter, like I had this initial respect for you just because your show is great to watch as a consumer. Like that's an awesome show. Right. And like I said, we all, everybody in craps nation, we're watching Dave every time he's on. Then I, you're like, Hey, come on the show. Cool. And like from the minute I agreed to do it, and you're like, here's how it's going to work. And like, you walked me through every single step of that thing. And the show was like on time. And if people could see the way that Dave runs the show from behind the curtain, I'm like, damn, like I had respect for you before that. Now I'm like, wow, like bar, bar raised. This is how you have to do this. And I tried to this week to get all that done, but holy moly, wrangling like 22 people and all the practice sessions and all the stuff and getting the timing right. I don't know. Well, John, you just like, went that's from the like hardest part of this 10 miles an hour to a hundred miles an hour in overnight. You're oh trying to do God. it all it's, in one day and uh, it's insane. Yeah. It's insane. Yeah. But yeah, so there, there's a lot of cool things that you were doing and I, I, so we all do it different, right? Everybody has their channel and we all have a different 
like lens on it, right? And you did this thing that was, uh, I have to ask you why you did it this way. When you would film yourself practicing, right? And you had your, your dice cam and your, and your betting cam, and then you would narrate over that as like an overdub kind of thing. That's, yeah. nobody's ever done that. Everybody's talking live. And I know when I do, my live streams are, I mess up all the time. But when I do a video video, like trying to really teach, I'll record that thing 40 times before I get it right. Yeah. Like my dice control series, those videos take me days, weeks to film. And it's interesting that you went with the talk over the throw thing. Why and how? Because that's yeah, super cool. So, so I, I learned early on that um, whatever little influence I have was eliminated every time I started to talk. So if I'm out there throwing the dice and trying to talk, I, I, I'm, not, I'm concentrating on what I'm trying to say, not what I'm trying to do. Uh, mm -hmm. So I thought I'd step back a little bit and uh, uh, just practice, record my practice session and then come back over and kind of talk about what went, what, what I was doing. And actually that was pretty well received. People seemed to like that uh, quite a bit. Um, then I uh, lost my table, I guess is probably the best way to put it. I, I'm having a custom table built and it's taking far longer than anybody ever thought it would. You still don't have and, a table? Uh, I still don't have a table. We're very really? close. I'm, uh, I'm hoping by the first of the year that I'll have it, but um, I think it was back in April, uh, we took down my old table, my practice rig, and took some of the parts from that and we were gonna use it on the new table. And at that time, we thought we were a couple of weeks away. Uh, so I've been without a, a decent practice table mm. for a very long time. Uh, so, mm. you know, as soon as I get that new table, we'll get back to doing some of those things again. That's cool. Cause you, I remember we'll you see. had like, you were putting videos up of your table being built. Like here, they're yeah, almost yeah. done. They were sending you pictures of it. Like, this is great. I'm so excited. I, I'm surprised it never came. Well, so the, the problems were in the chip rails and we're doing something custom with the chip rail. Uh, so mm. uh, the guy that's building the table uh, worked with a CNC shop and it was a string of bad luck. Uh, uh, one of them went out of business. One of them was going to do it as a side job and got too busy so they were never going to be able to do it. And, you know, it, with each one, it was a, you know, a six week setback. Uh, so... Uh, well, you know, and with COVID and the wood shortage and all uh, that mess, yeah. it just makes everything a thousand times worse or yeah. magnified at but, least, right? But the, this table, when it when I do get it, it it's it's a beautiful piece of work. It's a, it's a uh, it's a piece of furniture, uh, more or less. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be extremely heavy. The, the the guy that's building it for me, uh, he texted me the other day and said, guess how much this table is going to weigh? And I was like, I don't know, 400 pounds. <laughs> he just laughed at me. I said, what, 500 pounds? He says, much higher. And I said, what, a thousand pounds? He said, you're getting close. <laughs> so I'm Jeez. wondering how in the heck are we going to get this thing down in my basement? And once we get it down there, that's never moving. <laughs> no. So now do they bring it and assemble it in place or they bring he, it whole? He is going to bring it. So um, the guy that's building it for me, and, and I don't want to go too much into it yet, but he's uh, mm -hmm. looking to get into building craps tables, custom craps tables. Uh, oh, cool. So it's not going to be a, a cookie cutter type of a deal. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but this is going to be the very first table uh, that he's put together. And we're going to be doing some promotional videos for him and, and, and things like that. Oh, cool. So we'll, we'll get to see a, the new table here before too long, I hope. <laughs> Until then, I've got a six foot card table with a little Amazon felt and a, a throwing <laughs> station that, that, okay, I could practice some betting strategies against a random roller, but that's about the best I could do right now. And right. that's, and I didn't want to put that on the air. It makes sense. That makes total sense. So let me ask you this. When you go to the casino, so we, we haven't seen you throw in forever, right? When you go, this Ooh. whole series, this whole night is about money management and discipline and all of that, right? What is your, what is your go? What is your mentality when you go out there? Are you looking to, to, to crush it? You're looking to grind. Are you? No, I'm, I'm a grinder. Yeah. You're a grinder. And yeah. So, you know, it's really interesting that we, we evolve uh, as craps players. You know, I'm not definitely not the same craps player that I was when I started uh, just about three years ago. I haven't been playing that game, the game that's long. Um, but you know, I, 
in the beginning, I think I would go all the way across and then I went to inside numbers Then I played iron cross for a while. Then I played the don'ts, you know, I was kind of all over the place. Uh, but now, and my objective actually was to spend the most time as I can at the table. That's mm -hmm. changed. Uh, now that that's changed for me. Uh, now I, I, I have a goal, uh, 20% goal that that's, that's it. And I'm, I'm okay hitting that 20% cash out and get out of there. Uh, different mindset. And it's actually working pretty good for me right now. Yeah. I, you know me, I had the same goal most of the time, mm -hmm. but you know, I tell my stories, you know, my, my, when I go with, with Kathy, you know, that's an, it's a marathon when she's, you know, especially go to Vegas, right? When you go to Vegas with, and we're all there, I, I sometimes have to kill six, seven hours, mm -hmm. you know? So I do grind. I have grinders that I do just so I can play. And I actually like it when I do that. Like, I know you can't make the grind will cost you over the course of time. You may get a great roll in the yeah. middle of it. that lets you keep going. But over the course of time, that's going to, it's going to eat you up. But I really enjoy the game. Like I like this so much better than I like. I, I, I love Bach and other games too, but they're just not fun. Crafts is fun. Yeah. You know, there's just no, there's no game like it, you know, and it's one of those games where the same roll of the die or the same outcome of a shooter, 14 people have 14 different experiences from that, you know, and on the blackjack table, when the dealer busts, it's the same experience for everybody. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, you don't have that. It just, that's what this game is just so different. Yeah. Well, I think you've a couple of your guests, uh, starting with David earlier, uh, it, it's fun because two different people could have two different experiences with the same set of roles. Yeah. You know, you have somebody betting come bets, somebody betting place bets, somebody betting the don'ts. And we all share this, you know, eight rolls of the dice. Some people won money, some people lost money. Exactly. That's just how it goes. Well, that's a thing that I'm going to explore probably with, with uh, El Toro tomorrow. El Toro is coming back mm. to talk and he does a lot of team play and the Hawaiians do that too. Um, they play as a team, but they don't play with, with a combined bankroll. So they yeah. all win and lose for different reasons. But when, when you have somebody who I know plays with partners and like, you're, you're right. People win for different reasons and lose for different reasons. How does that factor in? Because that's, what makes this game so unique. And it really yeah. is a unique yeah. piece of it. And that's, I think that's what draws me to it. Even though I know it's a negative expectation game and my strategy is going to lose at some point, it, there's just, well, that's, you know, you know, I, I had to get that in my head. You know, this is a negative EV game. If I get up and if I get up to a certain point, walk away and walk away a winner and be happy about it. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, but I, I'm like you as well. Um, uh, my wife is uh, uh, a phenomenal slot player, actually. She does pretty well. And uh, uh, I'll be done in 20 minutes to an hour. <laughs> She'll go on for three or four more hours. Yeah. Uh, and well, uh, that's, it makes it makes it for a long night. But at the end it, of that three or four more hours, I still have my bankroll intact and and I'm happy. I'm grinning. So well, that's what I, you know, what I end up doing is I end up like in Vegas, especially. I, I became a roller coaster fanatic. And I would mm -hmm. try I would like Uber around Vegas and ride the different ride. Back when you know the Sahara had the great roller coaster down there. And I would do yeah. that stuff and I would hunt down a good cheesesteak and hunt down, you know, the best pizza in Vegas. And like, that's what I would do while she was playing. I win my money early and just fart around for a while. And just, you know, yeah, that's or go to I, sports uh, book. So YouTube is my friend. Start watching. Videos. Yeah. <laughs> or like I said, sit in a sports, book. I'll, 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 I'll watch sports forever. Yeah. And yeah. there was a casino. I forget where it was, where they filmed, they had a studio in the casino. Where, where was that? They have a, like a sports, like they were, they were filming like a, or the sports, whatever talk radio, like an ESPN affiliate, but they recorded there all day long. You can sit huh. there and have drinks and buy the sports book and watch them film their, their like whatever talk show. It was great. Yeah. And I don't, I don't know where that one would have been. Uh, MGM maybe MGM grand. And no, it wasn't there. It was a little time. It might be. And it was, it was smaller. It was like an off strip kind of place. Oh, okay. I, okay. I got to remember. It might've been South point actually. Cause we were out there for a baseball tournament. I remember doing that. It was great. It was like, that was like, you know, as good as gambling. Yeah. Just to watch, you know, watch some of the, the stuff you just can't see. And now we have sports betting here in, in Washington, finally. So yeah. I go to the casino locally. I can finally go to a sports book and watch something. Yeah. You know, and our one yeah. place has bowling. I can bowl, <laughs> I guess. 
you, you said South Point and uh, made, made me laugh because uh, I've only been given heat twice uh, at, at a casino. South Point was one of them. Uh, Somebody else has too. Somebody in the Craps Nation Skype said that too. I've heard that's surprising for an off strip casino to do that. What did they give you heat for? For setting? Um, not hitting the back wall. Uh, oh. So, uh, and so, you know, that's the rules. So they were justified mm -hmm. in, in giving me heat for it. But come on, you know, when you're throwing the dice and, you know, one hits the back wall and the other one jets off, you know, two feet to the right, it's about as random totally. as you're going to get anyway. It's like, yeah. okay, well, it didn't hit the back wall, but it certainly didn't do what I was trying to make it do. Exactly. <laughs> I had the same experience in Mesquite. I, I got yelled at by the lady, the box lady. Um, so I was trying to set the dice. I was trying to get my, my, my backspin and it was neoprene, like a mouse pad. And they would oh. dig in and they would actually check up and go backwards sometimes. I'm like, I'm trying. Mm. And she's like, you got to just throw them. I'm like, well, I'm, I'm, I cashed out. I'm like, I'm not going to, I'm not just yeah. going to wing them. Um, but I was trying really hard and they were digging in and you know, you're right. You can't always control. <laughs> no, no. So, so get a little heat, uh, there. Oh, actually, actually it happened to me three times. Um, not Fremont. I, I can't remember. I can't remember one of, one of the casinos on Fremont. Um, I was playing early in the morning. I was the only player and I, it, I'm used to playing on a 12 foot table and it was a 14 foot table and, and I was just having a hard time hitting that back wall. And mm. uh, the, the, the pit boss, he was actually pretty cool about it. He says, sir, you need to hit the back wall, sir. You need to hit that back wall. <laughs> he said, sir, you don't hit that back wall this next time we're going upstairs and you're going to have to carry down the small table. <laughs> he, he knew I was, <laughs> what I was doing and he was just having a good time. And, you know, I get it. And I, I for whatever reason, I just couldn't make it happen. It happened. Then I mean, the, uh, I was going to say the last time that I was given heat was just a couple of weeks ago uh, at a roll to win table. Um, I was at stick left mm. one and you know, those tables are small. Uh, yeah. And I was setting the dice and uh, throwing it and I had just come off of uh, a 43 roll. Uh, uh, yeah. 43. Wow. It was, it was awesome. And the stick lady said uh, that I couldn't extend my arm past halfway. Well, on those roll to win tables, if you're at stick left one or stick right one, you are at the middle of the table. It's like, you're right okay, there. Well, yeah. Let me just feel like a T-Rex. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want me to do? Uh, she says, I don't know, but you cannot extend your arm past halfway. Oh man. Okay. So those just, tables are tiny. They're like eight foot are. inside in the inside dimensions are about eight feet. There's not much to them. No, no, no. Yeah. They're, they're beatable. <laughs> I keep saying it. They are beatable tables for sure. So hopefully they aren't listening to us. Actually kind of, well, I hope they are because if we keep beating them, maybe they'll go away they'll and we'll get away. back to regular. Well, John, I was going to tell you that um, my favorite little honky tonk casino is down in uh, Northern Oklahoma called Tonkawa. And they, they were one of the first to get a roll to win table. It's gone. Uh, really? Now they claim it's due to mechanical problems. Um, but they could fix mechanical problems. Mm -hmm. you know, so you think it's getting uh, beat? My, what I understand is uh, most of those tables are leased. So, you know, it, it could be fixed if they really wanted to. So why yeah. is it gone? I, well, I they're like, a, I think the table is like a million money. bucks plus a lease fee, aren't they? They're super expensive. That's, that's what I've heard too. Yeah. So my, I, I suspect that they were actually losing money on that table. I wouldn't, I wouldn't doubt it. I've seen more long rolls on that table mm -hmm. than on a regular. I mean, you see them all the time. Yeah. So, yeah. I, and I think it's because yeah. of the surface. I mean, obviously the dice don't bounce on that surface very well and they just, they kind of hit and stick and that's what happens to them. Yeah. But you know, there are a lot of advantages to that roll to win table and you covered this in your podcast. Um, you know, some of them that I like is that I can, I can play the don'ts without any fear of anybody having any problem with it. True. You know, you know there's no chips out there, uh, you know, low landing zone, you know, obstacles, yeah, no landmines. Um, That's a good thing. Yeah. No landmines. Um, but if, if I want to go dark on a player, eh, it, they probably don't know it. No, it, it shows your bets kind of shooting out if it you're does. watching, but if you don't pay attention, you don't know who's where. Yeah. There's so much going on in that, you know, that video screen, my little don't bet is nobody is even cares lost in the mix. Right. Right. 
Which is good. I mean, the, the don't is that thing, you know, it's, it's got that weird stigma to it, you know, and like big AZ and, and we talk about all the time, you got to own it a little bit, but people also have to not think you're running against them. It's yeah. not the point. Yeah. yeah. Well, unless you're, unless you're one of those jerks, you know, one of those don't players that, that, that yeah. advertise they're a don't player and, uh, you know, start rooting for the seven and all that good stuff. And Yeah. I don't see many of those. I've seen a couple, but not very many of them. Most of the don't players that I run into that are super don't are like I was joking about. They're the old guys in the corner and they're at the hook mm-hmm. and they just got a, a rack full of black chips. Yeah. And they're just, yeah. you know, out there drinking whiskey and smoking cigars and usually keeping pretty quiet. Well, I think, uh, I think it was you that was telling me, uh, to evaluate a ta- table, you look at the hook and, and mm-hmm. see if it's full of black chips and if That's it's full exactly of black chips, it's probably a cold table. <laughs> yeah. yeah hundred percent. If the guy's still there with his black chips, you know, you're, you're on a cold one. <laughs> For yeah, sure. yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. But anyways, you know, we're here tonight to raise some money. Uh, and, yeah. uh, I, I'm grateful that you asked me to be on the show. So thank you. I think it's awesome you. that you're here. I think it's great. And you're, you, uh, now, did you want to run some old, some old footage? Is that what your, what your plan was tonight? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I went back and, and pulled out a few clips of, uh, my show. Um, and the, the first clip that I wanted to, t- to show talks about, uh, our organization, the craps nation and mm-hmm. organization is a bad term. Uh, uh, the craps nation is basically just a group of people who like to play craps and we get on this perpetual chat and we talk, we talk craps 24 seven. Uh, it's made up of people from several different continents and countries. Uh, it's a, it's a great uh, group of people. Um, and to paraphrase a friend of mine, one of the nice things about the craps nation is, uh, you know, when we see something, we say something, or we, we step in and we step up, uh, you know, when, when we need to, um, now, fortunately we have not had an opportunity to, uh, uh, deal with, you know, gambling addiction. Uh, uh, but there have been other things that, that the craps nation has, uh, come together for and helped out people in need. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's, it's a, it's a great organization that, that, uh, a few of us got together and started maybe close to three years now, two and a half, three years ago. Uh, and I think, uh, at last count, we're around 160 people, uh, that are, uh, in the, uh, yeah. in that chat. So, you know, I wanted to give a shout out to all my uh, friends over there in the craps nation. Some of them are here today. And if you're not, mm-hmm. uh, part of that chat and you want to, uh, give John a call, give me a call and we'll, we'll get you connected to, uh, uh, this large group of craps players. So yeah. the and first thing that I kind of wanted it, to it, they're just players, right? It's, it's not like it's a bunch of YouTube superstars that are out there being all high and mighty. It's, it's, you know, people talk it, and it, love it and talk about it all day long. So that that's a great point. And maybe, uh, maybe I'll go into a little bit of the origin of the craps nation. Yeah. Um, uh, it started with, with a couple of YouTube content creators. Uh, you know, we saw each other's videos. We started talking a little bit and we uh, thought, Hey, you know, we're all like-minded. Uh, we're a group of friends. Uh, let's, let's pull this together and see what we can do with it. And, uh, uh, I think bird dog 301. I saw him in the comments just a little mm-hmm. while ago. He was one of the founding members, sleepy 2525, George from CY, Rick from let it roll, uh, myself, um, gosh, uh, 36 full press. He was one of the founding members mm-hmm. and it was, but we all had YouTube channels. And when we started talking about craps nation, people thought you had to have a YouTube channel to be part of it. And no, that's not really what the intent. I thought was. that too. I didn't know. I didn't know yeah, how it yeah. worked. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, skill and luck. Skill and luck is one of the first people out there too. I saw, uh, I saw him come in. So, so yeah, so, so it's just a great group of people. And, um, unfortunately, you know, we had to deal with COVID, uh, but mm-hmm. we, we did find time to start doing some meetups, uh, and, and people actually meeting and playing in person. So the first video that I wanted to show is kind of a clip of a, of a few people. Um, if you watch closely, you're going to see big AZ, uh, in this clip oh, as cool. well. So if you're okay with it, we're going to try it. And, uh, yeah, hopefully let me switch over. Work. I'm going to switch to a full screen version of you. Let's see what happens here. Okay. So you go there. All right. I got to change my table out. Let's put you there. Okay. Okay. All right. So let's give this a shot.
Dave, we have no sound on this. Uh, can you hear me? I can hear you just fine. Yeah, it's not. There's no sound from the video itself. I'm wondering if they if they can hear it on the. If I would channel. guess not because my 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 volume levels are zeros for everything. Okay. All right, I'm just going to stop it then. All right, so I guess we're having some audio problems. We're not going to be able to show the videos, which is uh, too bad. Um, yeah, John, I don't know of another way to try this. Yeah, the only other way to do it would be, yeah, start, start singing, he says. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. I'm not going to be singing anytime soon now. Um, no, me neither. <laughs> yeah, the only other way to do it, I, I suppose, would be, yeah, the mics were hot for sure. Um, would be to try it over Skype where I took your system output. You can try that. Um, okay. If you want to, let's, let's, all right, everybody, give us a few minutes here. Let's try make a Skype call to me or actually make a Skype call. Yeah. Call me on Skype. Let's see Skype. what happens. I'm going to mute just, over here. Okay. Yeah. Should I hang up here? Um, no, I think I'll mute you here, but call me on Skype and then we'll see if you can share your screen through Skype. I should be able to show that. Let's try it. Okay. What, what, what's the worst that could happen? Yeah. <laughs> okay. There you are on Skype. Um, okay. But now I think we have an echo. Oh, you, I don't have an echo. Um, you might. Okay. How about now? You, Nope, I'm good. I have you muted um, on the other side. So if you share your screen and audio from Skype, I can send that through. Okay. Easier said than done. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not familiar with Skype. How do you share your screen? This. I can go to Skype. There's my Skype. I think I can do that. Am I still on video? Yep. Yep. I got you. I'm showing, I'm actually showing your Skype feed. So I'm seeing okay. like the other side of you. So I'm seeing like your R2D2 and all your fun stuff. Oh, over there. Yeah. you're on this camera. Hey, there you go. Yep. That's what Skype is showing me. So if you, hit the bottom sh the share screen button. Um, you should be able to share your screen and that video. Okay. Let's see microphone. microphone, a check mark. Come on. Share screen. All right, here we go. Okay, let's go this route. Let me know if the audio comes through. Okay. Have you shared screen yet? <laughs> yeah, I thought it did. No, we're still we're still seeing just you and no sound yet. So, hang on one second. You okay. There we go. I see the video now. Is the audio coming through? Nope. All right. Well, you can narrate it if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> no, maybe I'll just talk about some of the topics. Yeah, no worries. Yep. Let's let's go back over to the you got it. Ecamm yep, interview if we can. Yep. There we go. All right, back okay, on I'm hanging up.
All right. Oh, now you're, I got I to gotta unmute you now. Hold on. Can you hear me now? You are, there we go. Gotcha. Back. Sorry okay. about the uh, techno problems there, folks. Yeah. Sorry, guys. I was, I was actually looking forward to this, but uh, so we'll just talk through some of the things that I was going to show. Sure. So like, like I said a minute ago, it, the, that first introduction was just of the Craps Nation and showing some of the fun that we have. You know, uh, we had uh, Bird Dog and uh, Big AZ and, uh, you know, several people meeting up in Las Vegas uh, several times. Uh, I just had to have a little, happened to have a little bit of video and uh, uh, some, some photos of it. So I wanted to kind of show off the, the Craps Nation is not just a virtual chat. It's a, you know, it's a get out there. Let's play. Let's put our money together and see. Uh, not together. Let's, let's play together. Mm -hmm. But anyways, uh, so the, that was going to be the first clip. This is going to go really fast. Uh, <laughs> the, the second clip was going to be about practice and how mm. do you practice playing craps? And we've seen a couple of the, uh, the best ways to do it already on your show tonight. One of the things that, that I like the most, I'm going to reach around here this but uh, you know the this is just a uh, a plastic it looks like a cookie jar um that i use put my canceled dice in it but this is one of the best tools out there um that you can use i think to to practice in that landing zone are you keeping your dice together are you hitting them in the same spot over and over and over again uh so this is one of the tools that i use uh uh, fairly frequently when I, when I have my table, um, the, <laughs> I, I don't know where yours came from, but mine was, uh, from Walmart and it was, uh, filled oh. with those, uh, fireball candies. Oh yeah. yeah. I bought mine on Amazon. Yeah. Amazon sells them on the business side for like stores. So that's what I did. Yeah. Yeah. So I think I it was think like, it was eight, like bucks. $8. Yeah. Yeah. So eight bucks, you get a bunch of fireballs and you got this nandy, you know, handy little, mm -hmm. uh, canceled dice. <laughs> holder and practice tool. So it's, it's pretty oh, yeah. good for uh, just about everything. Um, you know, what? the other tool that I wanted to show is actually downstairs, uh, that was on the video. It was called a dice gripper and Ooh, uh, I have one. I can show you, I can, I can show you mine. Oh, okay. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. So, so the dice gripper, you know, it, all it is, is it's a wooden tool. Yeah, there you go. So you camera? put your dice in there and it's going to be consistent and it teaches you, let me just grab a couple of dice real quick. Yeah, it it nice. kind of teaches you how the feel should be when you pick up the dice. So every time it's going to be the same yeah. every single time. And, you know, that's one of the things that you want to work on. If you're really practicing uh, to get yeah, better at your like game. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah. And it's got the mirror in it, so you can kind of see exactly where you yeah. where you're do, uh, setting them. And if you're setting, you know, with the with the, with the sixes, you know, straight sixes, that makes it so much easier uh, uh, to see. Now, John's got uh, uh, you know a fancy uh, dice gripper, but you could do the same thing uh, with a thin book. So get a book that's about the same uh, width as what you want. And I'm just going to grab my iPhone here and use it, and you can you know, butt your mm -hmm. dice up towards the, uh, the book and have the same effect without having to build or buy a, a dice gripper. So how you grip it, where you land it, those are two very important things. Um, um, Do you, you ever see my, my, my shoe rack that I use, Dave? I don't think so. This is, this is a funny one. Check this out. I have this, this uh, shoe rack that I bought uh, from Amazon. This thing is about okay. eight yeah. inches tall, maybe. And I put it on my table. I'll put it here, but that's not where nobody yeah. goes. And so I can shoot to land over it so I get the right angle. And I put it down the end. Or I leave it out here and I shoot under it. When I'm oh, wow. Okay. Surface. And so it's about, like I said, about eight inches tall. And I can go over or under it. And that way I can I can kind of target different grow types. Yeah. And work my uh, I, You know me, I'm a big... I'm a big energy believer, so I try to target you know high or low based on the bounce. So, yeah, and yeah. again, another twenty dollars investment, I think, for that thing. Well, uh, gosh, what do they call them? Um, you know those big orange, uh, orange and white sticks that you might see uh, in the snow to indicate where a fire hydrant is. 
Oh yeah, yeah. You know, you know what I'm talking about. I I don't know what they're called, stick. but I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. So I uh, I have one of those that uh, mm-hmm. I would lay across the table. Uh, so it, it the the whole idea mm-hmm. is just like you said, some sort of barrier that you can say, "Am I consistently getting it over, or am I getting it mm-hmm. under?" Uh, that's another great tool. I think you had um, a video out with that on it, didn't you? Where you put the thing at the end of your table yeah. and you're trying to shoot over it. I probably did. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I just saw a couple of comments coming in. How do I join the Craps Nation? Hmm. And Rob, yeah, Rob's jumped in there. Just email one of us, uh, and and we'll help you get connected. It's through Skype, uh, and uh, and you know, all of this is you just get added to a Skype group. Yeah, it's an so, it's an enormous chat room, basically. Um, and yeah, there's also so a Discord channel you're... that goes along with. Yeah, there's a, there's a Discord channel too that nobody uses, um, but I like it. <laughs> I, I was going to say, I'm going to jump all over the place. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, our friend Andrew uh, Craps Down Under, he uh, mm-hmm. created that Discord site. And um, and I actually prefer the Discord site over chat. Uh, Me too. To be honest with you. But um, uh, for whatever reason, it hasn't taken off. So. It hasn't. And, you know, and I do a lot of work in um, Jeremy's in the Color Up Discord. So mm-hmm. I'm in there. Yeah. Just, that's a pretty big following too. And so I'm in there a lot. I do most of my chatting whatever in there besides my youtube channel comments i do a lot of commenting on the on the channel yeah yeah so all right so let's go back to how do you practice so so when when i'm practicing um i i do i I practice my grip and i practice the landing zone and there's a difference between practice and playing Uh, uh, when i'm truly in the mindset to practice i'm i'm usually not betting uh, I'm I'm just working on the mechanics, repeating mm. them over and over and over, uh, trying to work on that muscle memory. Um, but there's also, uh, I guess it depends on your betting strategies, but it's also good to practice your your betting, you know, you, knowing what you're going to do under certain uh, circumstances. Mm-hmm. So, you know, uh, are you going to, um, you know, are you going to regress? Are you going to press? Are you going to keep it same bet? Uh, knowing what you're going to do based on the conditions and being able to just do it without thinking is also uh, very important. So uh, I'll practice both (laughs) ways, but for the most part at this point in my game, uh, it's more about repeating the same mechanics over and over again. I've I've had such mixed success trying to mix them. Like you're so right about that. Like throwing for an hour, not betting, and then betting for a, a while without throwing and working, mm-hmm. you got to do it separate. I think, because when I, I find that when I try and throw and bet at the same time, if I don't get success in the throw, everything goes to hell in a handbasket. Like my, my, my mental side goes, goes South. You know, I just, I can't, I don't focus well enough. I think. Yeah. Although yeah, it, I, in the casino, it's going to be done with both. But I think when I'm just working on a skill, you know, I think the betting skill, I think in the throwing skill are, are definitely, yeah, John, yeah. give me one second. I'm going to try to send you a file through Skype. Go for it. Go uh, of, for it. Of one of the short videos. Go for it. The, and uh, if this works, uh, you know, you probably already encountered this, but uh, as a YouTube content creator, <laughs> we do not get it right all the time. We come <laughs> up with our own with bloopers. No and uh, I wish I'd have started this a long, long time ago. Uh, but I captured a few of my bloopers and I think it's just like maybe a, a one minute little video okay. and, and hopefully this will work with the audio for, if it comes from your side, from my side, I, I sure can. So yeah, I want you to send it over. Is it still not there? I'm not seeing it yet. Okay. It, it should be coming to me. Uh, I put, sent it to you on Skype. Not here. Okay, yet. so it's, it says it's sending, so it might take. It's, no, a, it's like a, 150 it's a video megabyte. file. It'll it'll take it a hot minute to get there. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. So so, anyways, um, that's that's how I practice. I, I I really try to focus in on on one thing. Am I am I working on my mechanics? Am I working on my betting? And then, of course, I like to play. Uh, yeah. And I don't get to the casino as often as I would like to. You know, I'm uh, in Wichita, Kansas, and. Uh, we, we have one, uh, casino that's close by, uh, but 
the rest of them are down in Oklahoma. Uh, and, you know, it's either an overnight trip or a very late night. Uh, so I just don't get to go as often as I'd like. Uh, so one of the things that I really liked to do um, was uh, participate in the live fantasy crap shows. In fact, I ran a live fantasy crap show for quite a while. Um, uh, but the time commitment uh, is just, you know, too, too intense. I couldn't keep it up. Uh, you know, George from CY, uh, one of the founding fathers of the craps nation, he also started the live fantasy craps games and, mm -hmm. uh, and it's still going on today. Uh, yeah, he's got a couple of other people that, that will fill in for him. Um, you know, uh, when, when he needs a little break, uh, you know, Troy, uh, 0.7 out. He's, uh, he's hosted a few of the games and then Arnell dice grinders. He's also hosted some of the games. So even though I can't get into the casino uh, all the time, uh, mm -hmm. there's always a game going on. Um, uh, you know, big AZ, uh, like I think he said every night he's got games going on. I know he, he uh, has all the time. Yeah. Jeremy over the color up club, they've got tournaments going on all the time. So there, there's yeah. ways to participate virtually. Um, <laughs> And I'll say this with no real money involved. Uh, That's true. Uh, so, <laughs> Which is important, uh, right? I mean, <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, the live fantasy craps that George and the craps nation guys did. And we're doing that tomorrow morning, by the way, at eight o'clock Pacific mm -hmm. time. So 11 o'clock in the East, we're going to do two hours of that, which is good. I'll get some breakfast in me while we're playing fantasy craps. Um, <laughs> yeah. They, you know, I'm going to see my face while we're doing it. Um, but that's going to be going on tomorrow. Um, and yeah, the color up club, they do, um, a tournament and there's also every night they have fantasy craps. There's somebody in fantasy every single night. And then of course, big AZ does the thing, but you know, it's easy only gets four people on at a time. These fantasy yeah. craps, yeah. I've seen 20 people in there before and it's just, there's no pressure. Just, you know, let up your table or not and just, you know, play along. It's just, it's really good to hone your skills. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Well, then, All right, you I got, got your video. Let's go ahead. There? Yeah, I came through and I'm gonna change scenes here. We'll put that in and we'll see see uh see it roll here. Give me one second. Perfect. The bloopers. Buddy, and thanks for uh, joining. You know, I've had the luxury of getting a text message in the middle of the show. Okay, guys, forget the likes, forget subscribes. If you really want to recognize me, forget the super chats. What I really want is cookies. Coming up on the next Talking Craps, we have Jeremy Ellerick from Color Up. That's right. The original, the guru, the man. He is a god. He is a dice god. In, in my videos, I've never asked people to subscribe to my channel, hit that bell notification, whatever. I don't do that. <laughs> it just so happens that. your your phone <laughs> ding just as you were saying, hit that bell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Perfect timing. Yeah. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Same Bet. Today, it's part two of the Iron Cross progression strategy. We're going to do things just a little bit different today than we did last in, in the last. Ready software. Just want to see how this sounds. Uh, see if this is something that I want to use. I think my S's are kind of, and my P's might be popping a little bit too much. All right, let's check it out. Oh my God, I'm ugly, Dave. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> you, you're like you're like Gene Simmons' cousin or something. <laughs> yeah, you got that. Yeah, so the, there's a few That's minutes great. of things that didn't go quite as planned. That is awesome. I have so many bloopers. I I throw them away and burn them with fire. <laughs> so uh, no, you, keep them because. Uh, You'll have a best of bloopers one day, and it'll probably be your your best video ever. Oh my gosh! I've done that so many times, and like hit myself, yeah. and just kind of. <laughs> yeah, you know, but when you're doing a live show, <laughs> you see it all. Uh, but for whatever yeah. reason, I seem to make more mistakes when I'm trying to do a recorded show. Uh, oh no question. When my and I, I've I've talked to myself about like when I do a new recording, like an actual like let's learn a strategy. Thing. I should just pretend I'm live streaming is what I get. I get, but no, I sit here and just, and matter of fact tonight, cause I've got from like three o'clock to six o'clock, there's nobody scheduled. I'm probably going to record a video live in front yeah. of everybody. You'll get to see my, my live bloopers of me trying to record myself. Um, I I'm a perfectionist and I'm sure you are too. You want to get it right. And yeah. every, um, and every 
you know, look off. Like I'll look at my eyes and like, like now we're talking, so I'm not looking at my camera, but I look at my green dot when I'm doing a video. And if I rewatch and I'm over here, I refilm the whole thing. Yeah. I, I, it's, and you have to, sometimes you have to, you have no choice, but to start over from the very beginning. And, you know, yeah. these videos that we put out, uh, you know, it might be a 30 minute video, but it might take you know, six hours to put that 30 oh, minute video together. Easily six hours easily. Yeah. No. And like when I watch a lot of YouTube, I'm sure you do too. You see these, a lot of folks have those jump cuts where it's like, you can just see like you know, all of a sudden they're over here. Like they're just cutting out their mistakes. And they always, the number one advice they give you is don't, don't keep restarting, just accept your mistake and then cut it out later. And I'm like, I feel like it looks unprofessional. So I always, every video that you see me do, every one of them, it's from start to finish one take. Yeah. And that can take well, six, you know, seven hours. It's been a while since I've done a recorded video, but one of the things that I like to do is uh, when I do make a cut like that, if it, if it's appropriate. I'll put in like a crossfade or something. So it's very mm -hmm. obvious that I'm doing a cut fade. Uh, yep. uh, I'm not really trying to hide anything. It's just, okay, well, I, yep. I sneezed or, or something like that. Yeah. I'll um, do them uh, with scenes. Can... Yeah. When I change yep. scenes, like if I'm dice control video, like here's the table and now I'm going to go to this. Thing. Those are, are complete cuts, not the whole thing. I mean, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, um, you know, our friend George uh, from <clears throat> CY, he, he goes live twice a day, every day, uh, and we'll roll the yeah. dice. I think it's 70, 70, 72 times. Um, uh, and he is probably the most transparent man on YouTube, uh, uh and showing the good, the bad, and the ugly is, uh, is yeah, how no he question. So, yeah. So he's, he's kind of been my inspiration and my uh, moral compass on, on, you know, what, what's good content and what's not. Yeah. So, so shout out to George. I know he's going to be on here in a few hours and, uh, he will uh, just, uh, I always wanted to say thank you, George, for, uh, uh, you know, being that, that compass for me. He's so, yeah, he's so dedicated to this thing too, isn't he? He just, he I mean, is. twice a day, every day, you know, and the day. life fantasy and, you know, he lives in Cyprus, which is like a 10 hour difference for me. Um, yeah. and there's never a time where I've written him at all hours and he's like, yeah, you know, I'll get you when I wake up. And he, he never doesn't want to talk to you. No, no, he's he always, is, always. uh. He is the best ambassador for this game that that we could possibly have. Yeah, no, no, no question. He's 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 a great guy. So yeah, yeah, just blessed. I mean, it's funny because when you walk into the Crafts Nation, and again, I didn't know. I'm like everybody else. I didn't know it was a it was a open thing. I thought now I've got a channel. Let me in <laughs> to the thing, you know. And George is the first guy that reached out. Once I was in there, he private chatted me almost instantly. And hey, welcome. How you doing? And it was like you know you're just part of the group, you know? And it was like, never, no judgment. And then he was, you know, he quizzed me a little bit on some things, you know, when yeah. I was doing my, my videos and, you know, to see kind of where I was, you know, and it's, it, he's just a great guy. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah. So, you know, I, I apologize, John, the, the uh, uh, other stuff that I had, I could try to send you one of my other favorite ones. I don't know how long it would take, but. I'm going to drop it in here. And I don't know, is your next guest uh, ready They're not to roll? here yet. I'm actually going to drop them a quick email because the link that I'd sent earlier changed, obviously. So, uh, okay. Let me get my yeah. So, while you're doing that, <clears throat> one of the favorite videos <clears throat> that I made, which required a whole lot of editing, uh, was when I had Mark Duvall from the You Can Bet on That uh, podcast. He joined me and we had to talk about gambling in Hollywood. And I had taken several scenes uh, from different uh, movies and put them together as a little montage. And that's what I'm sending you right now. So I'm hoping that that'll come through. Uh, that, uh, when we talk about editing, that was probably one of my best uh, editing jobs I've ever done. And mm. the one I had the most fun doing. So, you know, Hollywood and gambling, that's a uh, that's that's a fun topic. So uh, I'll ask you, John. Do you do you have a favorite gambling movie? Oh, probably Casino. Mm, I just okay. I literally just rewatched it because I was um I wanted my son to watch it. My son has this rule of any movie made before two thousand is unwatchable, oh, and I'm like, that's not true. You have to watch this. 
And so we watched that and he was like, that's actually really good. And the way that they did it, like that whole narration style, I just love that movie. Yeah. And it's old yeah, Vegas. That, and it's, you know, it's a thing for sure. Yeah. Uh, one of my favorites <clears throat> is actually uh, <laughs> it's Vegas vacation. Yeah. Oh, bar none. Uh, did, that's, did, that, that scene in that off strip casino is one of the best things. <laughs> yeah. Guess what number? All right. Four. No, it's three. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Stephen Smith so out there, good. James Bond. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, so so this, I, I think it just finished sending. Did you receive it? It's it's just coming in now. Um, it's downloading. Let me, uh, I can switch to it whenever you want. Okay. Yeah, I think that's going to be a good way to end uh, our segment. Okay, hold on one second. I'm going to switch over to the scene. I've got to replace. Thanks for uh, joining. You know. Take the full odds on the 10, 200 on the hard way. The limit on all the numbers, 250 on the 11. Thank you very much. Say, you played this game before. Just once. No, uh, no gratuity is, is necessary, sir. Pick a number? I, I'm great at that. Coin toss. Eddie, these are my games. Come on, bet. Red, 25. Red win. Jeez. <laughs> Card counting, Clark? Is that legal? Sharpens the player's head. Whatever you do, don't roll a seven! Come on, come on. Thank you. Very nice. I told you I was hot today. <laughs> when a man can come to Las Vegas with a few extra bucks in his pocket, maybe throw a ten spot down on a table, Pay an extra dollar for a steak with his eggs. That's a happy day for that man. Oh, that's good stuff right there. Yeah, so I had oh, so much fun putting that together. Uh, oh, man, and it's actually great. two different. I had done two different promos. Uh, uh, the first one set to the music, and then the other one was just sort of the clips with the uh, with the audio in it. But with the voices. But yeah, like I said, uh, Mark Duvall from You Can Bet on That podcast. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know if you know Mark or not, but uh, oh, I don't know him, but I, I know I, I love that podcast. Yeah. So Mark and uh, Tim Lawson from The Better Life, uh, they do a lot of TV and movie uh, gambling discussions. So Mark and I uh, got on and we, we, we just talked about our favorite uh, casino film. So, so yeah, that was it. That that's, that's what I had for you tonight, John. Awesome, Dave. Thank you so much. That was a fun hour. Yeah. We had a wing a little so, bit there, didn't we? But it was fun. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, cool. Wow. All right, let's go to tally, shall we? I think some more donations came in while you were talking. Oh, sweet. I think I thought I saw an email come by. Let's go take a look. Yeah, I think it's my, getting pretty late in the night. We've uh, the viewers have 
uh, dropped a little no, bit. We still, we got, still like, got skill and luck. Like, like 50 people are still here. Skill and luck is, is going to be here every hour. Um, let's see. How are we doing over here on this side? A little refresh. Come on. 909. Look at that. We're creeping up there. So that's good. We made, made a little <laughs> What was the movie there, with and... Elliot Gould? <laughs> I saw Tito Haggard uh, put a comment out there. Um, that was, it wasn't Elliot Gould, but uh, there was, it was Vegas Vacation. Uh, yeah. Uh, at least, uh, Elliot at least Gould, that's what I'm thinking of. Elliot Gould was in a gambling movie. It was like one of his first movies ever. It was a poker movie. I can't remember what it's called now. I just, I might, I saw it about six months ago. I'll have to look that up. It's, it's actually really, really well done. I, I think the Better Life. They might have even talked about that movie. That's my where I heard about it. Pretty good though. Um, let's see how are we doing on the auction items. The auction items I think are lagging a little bit. The Craps Nation Black Dice that you donated are up to sixty-one bucks, which is great. Oh, sweet. And we, yeah, we started. That, that's actually really saw. I still need this owl picture. Got to get the color up layout going. That's going to be a. I think it's going to go go hot and heavy tomorrow, but that's going to be a big item. We got to get that thing sold for sure. But we're getting there. Well, yeah, we're getting no, there. The, those those black dice, um, serial number zero zero eight. They they were the eighth pair of or set of dice yeah. that came off the assembly line for uh, uh, the black <laughs> craps nation dice. So, uh, you know that that's definitely a, a collector's item there. Those are really cool. Those are really, and those I've got the white dice now that I just got from Sleepy. Mm -hmm. And the white dice are so cool looking. And so, yeah, the white yeah. and the black together would be a really killer, a killer get for somebody. So, so, you know, just to let everybody know, these dice came from Midwest gaming, uh, the, the place that supplies casinos with their dice. So they <clears> are <throat> casino quality dice, razor sharp edges. Um, mm -hmm. they'd be exactly what you would see in the casino. They don't have stamps on them. They're not drilled through. They're not canceled dice. Uh, they are casino quality. Yeah, they're super, super cool. I, I, I keep staring at them <laughs> because yeah. you know what I mean. If, you, if people who know me know, I'm all about black. Everything I, I have like a probably a thousand long sleeve black shirts. I, that's all I have. And every <laughs> tattoo I've got is for the, except for the, the the wings on on this one horse, all black and gray. I'm just like that's my thing. Um, yeah. So when I saw the black dice, I'm like, I gotta have me a pair of black dice. So at some point, <laughs> so that's so my did next you introduce day. gray after the uh, beard started coming in? Yeah, gray yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my hair used to be black. I saw. It's, it, I'll, I'll tell you what. I'll make you guys a deal. If we can hit goal, if we can get the five thousand bucks on this thing tomorrow, I will show you a picture of me with hair. Oh, nice. And I had hair. I had hair all the way down to my pants when I was younger. So. I got pictures to prove it, but we got to get the 5K, and then I'll show it to you. Get the 5K. What an everybody. incentive. Awesome. Yep. That'll be a, my, my first blooper reel. <laughs> yeah, there sure. you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Awesome. Well, Dave, thank you so much for being here. I've got the square pair guys in the green room. I'm going to go ahead, and, and we're going to watch that that video one more time, and I'll bring them Sounds on, good. and we'll, we'll get to our next hour. Thank you again for being yeah, thank you, John. Talk to you later. You got see you later. And you got, you got, who's who's next on your show, by the way? Is it is it do you want to announce that? Uh, your next I, I actually have it. Yeah, yeah. Um Rick from Let It Roll uh will be on really? the show Monday night. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. That's great. Looking forward to that. All right, guys. I'll talk to you All later. All right, Dave. Thank you so much. Yep. Bye.